Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, in this video we're gonna see how to deploy an app, a web application using eBCLI tool. So in previous video we saw how to install eBCLI so I still have uh, the same environment where we left in the last video. So if I do which eb, eb is there, eb minus minus version. That's all looking good. Let's have a look. So on the right, I have logged into my AWS management console. And if I click Elastic Beanstalk, there is no Elastic Beanstalk. There is no app that's running there. Okay, so let me CD to my play directory. So we are trying to do the exact same thing which we did uh, in the original video uh, uh, through the management console. But this time, you're going to do everything from the uh, command line using ebcli tool. Okay, so the first thing to do is let me do make directory eb demo cd to eb demo. So that's my project directory, application directory. And here I'm going to echo a simple file index.html. It's just a simple file that says just me and open source. So that's the application we are going to deploy. It's not a complex one, it's just a simple one suitable for this demo. Okay, so that's all needed. Uh, so now we can go ahead and create this environment, deploy this in AWS and so on. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so the first thing to do is eb init to initialize your environment. So it's going to ask you for the region where you want to deploy your application. So by default, it says default is three, which is Oregon. So I'm gonna deploy this in a region closer to me, which is London. So I'm gonna select 16. And then next it says enter application name. Default is EB demo. So it has got that from the directory name. So since we are in the EB demo directory, it assumes you're going to create an application named EB demo. Okay, so before this, uh, if you haven't used EB demo or if you haven't used AWS CLI before, it will ask you for your access key and secret access key. So since I've got my AWS CLI configured, so it's taking the credentials from my, uh, let me show you. So when we did the AWS CLI installation video, we did uh, AWS configure, so which asked you for the uh, secret key and the access key ID. So they're all in the home directory under AWS. So there you go, there you've got the config and the credentials. So that's where the EB command line tool is going to pick the credentials from. Okay, so let's go and do the same command again, eb init. Let's select uh, EU West 2, London region. Enter the application name, let's say eb demo, the default one, just hit enter. And then application eb demo has been created. It appears you're using PHP, so it found the uh, file. It has scanned the file in this directory. So the file we had was index.html and it found that we are trying to use PHP. So this is equivalent to, uh, on the AWS management console, it's equivalent to selecting the runtime PHP. Okay, so we want to use the PHP environment. Select the application version, select the platform version. Let's go with the latest 17.2, which is the default. Cannot set up code commit because there is no source control setup. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can ignore that in my next video. I'll show you how to integrate source control uh, with your EB environment by using Git. So for now it's asking, do you want to set up SSH for your instance? And if you press enter, I don't actually want to, uh, I don't want SSH access to the, uh, to the web instances uh, because I can deploy it from the EB command line tool. I don't need to log into the uh, machine. But if you want, you can uh, you can enable that access. Let, let's say we want to do that. Yes, and it's asking for a key pair. If you already created a key pair, it will be listed here, as in my case, just me, AWS demo. So that's the key pair I created. Default is one, I'm going to use that. And if you haven't got any key pair, you will be given the option to create a new key pair from, right from the command line. EB demo, that's created, that's it. So EB in it, so we have done the initialization. Now what we are going to do is we are going to run another command called EB create. EB create, that's it. And if you do that, it's going to ask for a couple more questions. 
environment name default is EB demo dev that's okay it's just the name of your environment you can give whatever you want if it's a production environment uh, change the name accordingly I'm gonna go with the default EB demo dev enter the DNS CNAME prefix this has to be unique let's say EB demo dev dash uh, just me dash Venkatian whatever it is but it has to be unique Select a load balancer type, classic application or network load balancer. So the default option is application load balancer, which seems fine. So let's go with that one. Okay, I think those are the three options that will ask you when you run the EB create command. So now it's going and creating the environment for you. So application name, some uh, region, few details, and you can see the events here. It is starting the environment it's using the Elastic Beanstalk from the Amazon S3. So it has actually uploaded uh, the code index.html as a zip file in our uh, S3 bucket. So it's going to take, because it's going to install EC2 instance, load balancer, and all those details, it's going to take like 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when it has completed this setup. Alright, the command has completed. It has created the application and the environment. Uh, let's see what it has done. I'm going to maximize the screen here. Okay, creating environment using Elastic Beans. So that's okay. So what it has created. It has created a target group uh, because we are deploying an Elastic Load Balancer, an application Elastic, uh, sorry, um, an application Load Balancer. So it has created the target group. It has created a couple of security groups, one for the Elastic Load Balancer and one for the EC2 instance. It has created the auto-scaling launch creation, launch configuration, auto-scaling group, and then an EC2 instance, and then a couple of auto-scaling group policies, one for scaling up, one for scaling down. So in order to do scaling up and scaling down based on an alarm, so it has created a couple of alarms. So one for uh, the scaling up and one for scaling down. So two CloudWatch alarms and it has created a load balancer, load balancer listener and this is the URL of the application. So that's completed. Um, let's have a look. EB list. So EB list is a command to list the uh, applications. So at the moment we have EB demo dev. So on the right here I'm going to refresh my screen there you go so that's the environment that we deployed so it's green and it's healthy so I'm gonna click that and uh, that's the URL let's quickly verify the URL so if I click that just me and open so so that's the application we wrote okay let me close that that's the health of the application these are all the list of events okay let's see what other options we have got in the so once we have created the environment we've got whatever you can do on the console you can do it from the command line Okay, let's see. I'm going to look at the configuration. Okay, so these are the list of configurations that you can modify. Equally, on the command line, you can do the same thing, which is EB config. So it gives this information, and if you want to change anything, for example, if you want to change the instance type from T2 micro to T2 small, T2 medium, so you can change the instance type and so on. So basically, uh, these are all the list of configurations that the application knows about and if you want to modify anything it's like modifying it here okay I'm not modifying this file so it says no changes made exiting and if you make any change uh, it will upgrade it will update your environment accordingly okay let's go back to dashboard um, logs okay at the moment there are no logs uh, what we did was request logs. We could either download full log or we can see the last hundred lines. So we can do that by clicking the request logs button. But if you want to do that from the command line, EB logs, that's it. So it's going to request logs. So it says retrieving logs. And on the right, uh, you will see the log shortly. Okay, so that's the log here. We got the logs and if I refresh here, you can see the logs and you can download it here that's the log file okay and then health so we have one instance and uh, how long it's been running what's the status of it and the network latency uh, the requests the load average CPU utilization of the instance and everything and if you want to see that on the command line the command is EB health 
So that's the health. You can see all those details, all the details you saw on the console. You can see it from the command line. And if you want to see it continuously, meaning auto refreshing, uh, you can pause the option minus minus refresh. So that's going to show the screen and it's going to refresh every eight seconds. Yep. Uh, on the top right, you can see the number of seconds left to uh, for the next refresh. Zero seconds now and it's refreshed. Okay, so that's something useful. Monitoring alarms. So what alarms we have and all those things. Events. List of events. So the latest event is pulled log because we use the eb logs command. So if you want to see that on the command line, it's eb, uh, sorry, eb events. So those are the list of events. Cool. And then uh, eb status. That's the status of the environment. And finally, if you want to terminate your environment, it's eb terminate. And it's asking to confirm by entering the uh, environment name. Oh, sorry. I wanted to show you one more thing. If you want to open the URL right from your command line, the command is eb open. And if you run that, it's going to open up a browser window, just me and open source. Cool. So eb open is the command. eb terminate. Confirm with the name eb demo dev. Okay, so again, it's going to take a little while because it needs to delete lots of resources. It has deployed uh, all these resources, uh, the order scaling group, launch configuration, target group, elastic load balancer, EC2 instance, uh, alarms, scaling policies, and then what else? It has well, the security groups and everything. So bear in mind, it won't delete the S3 bucket. We have to delete that manually and also uh, you won't be able to delete the bucket because there is a policy attached to the bucket so you need to delete the policy before you can delete the S3 bucket. Let's do that while it's terminating the environment. Services, if you go to services and say, search for S3. So that's our S3 and there is this bucket. I'm going to select the bucket and try deleting it by entering the name of the bucket paste confirm and you can see one error view details access denied that's because let's go into the bucket look at the permissions bucket policy and there is the bucket policy so action delete bucket is denied so let's delete this policy delete and then go back to s3 select and then click delete. Now again, we have to confirm with the name of the bucket. Control C, Control V, and then confirm. And the bucket is gone. So now let's go back to Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, the state is gray, which means either it's being created or it's being updated or it's being terminated. Okay, so in a short while you will see the environment will get terminated but meanwhile let's go and look at the other configurations ec2 instances so there is one instance that it has actually terminated that's good and then security groups the default security group it has deleted the two security groups that it has created load balancers we shouldn't be seeing any load balancer yep target groups so it has cleaned the target groups auto scaling groups no auto scaling group launch configurations nothing and if I go to EC2 dashboard everything is back to normal so it has completely cleaned we have cleaned up all the environment so make sure to shut down and delete all the resources that it has deployed and it's it's always a good practice to confirm that it has indeed deleted all the resources it has deployed otherwise it will incur uh, additional costs if you leave it running it will uh, eat away your free tier limits okay so it has deleted the load balancer the cloudwatch alarms auto scaling group policies uh, ac2 instance auto scaling group launch configuration security groups and everything it has also deleted the sns topic okay that's good 
So I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope uh, this video was useful. And if you've got any questions or any comments, uh, please leave me a comment and I should be able to get back to you at the earliest. And uh, in my next video, I will show you how to manage multiple environments uh, using the ABCLI command. So, so far we have seen just uh, creating one environment for your application. In the next video, we will see how to create multiple environments, maybe one for production environment, one for testing environment, and how to make use of uh, the version control git system uh, with different branches mapping to different environments and so on so it's going to be exciting the next video and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i will see you all in my next video bye bye